I did it. I did it again. I think I mentioned it in last article, uh, or one of the last few, that I have recorded and not had my mic on. And I just did it again. I just, let's check. Okay, the light's on. It's green. Um, so let's try it again. Dude, I read all of this, then all of this right here. It, well, I stopped right here, all right? Um, and you know what pisses me off the most about that is how stupid, stupid you feel afterwards. Um, <laughs> so here we go. The Age Herald, Sunday, October 11th, 1908. Uh, at least my cat got to listen. Um, and she gets to listen again. So, um, great changes in the universe. Interesting discoveries of London scientists. Greenland's climate. The land of snow and ice was once a place of tropical foliage. Five great continents in history of man. <sighs> Having deja vu, it's almost like I've read this before. I'm sweating, I need my own personal fan, shut up. The Bible speaks of one flood and one Noah who escaped in his ark with his family. But it now appears that there have been many floods and many Noahs Modern science and secret doctrine and the testimony of deep sea soundings, of the distribution of plant and animal life, of language and ethnology, of religious, architectural, and other remains of ancient writings, race, tradition, and archaic legends of zoology and other sciences, together with the findings of such investigators as Mr. W. Scott Elliott of London, who claims to have had recourse to unusual sources of research, unite in bearing witness to the existence of at least three great series of cataclysms which have occurred under the influence of the Earth's axial changes, each effacing some old continent and giving rise to a new one, each the burial of a fet race and the birth of a fresh which has marked some new phase in human evolution. The story runs that there have been five great continents in the history of man, and of these only one has survived from the beginning, the imperishable sacred land, so named because it is said to be the cradle of the first man and the dwelling of the last divine mortal chosen for the future of humanity. I'm reading H.P. Lovecraft's uh, Mountains of Madness, and this is what I picture Hyperborea being if we were to go up there now, right? Under the pole's stars, watchful eye. Of this mysterious and sacred land, an ancient writing declares that the pole star has its watchful eye upon it from the dawn to the twilight of the day of the great breath. The second continent was the Hyperborean. The land which stretched out its promontories southward and westward from the North Pole to receive the second race, and comprised the whole of what is now known as Northern Asia. Such was the name given by the oldest Greeks to the far off and mysterious region of the Hyperboreans, the country that extended beyond Boreas, a real continent which knew no winter in those early days, nor have its sorry remains more than one night and one day during the entire year even now. The nocturnal shadows never fall on it, said the Greek, for it is the land of the gods, the favorite abode of Apollo. The god of light and its inhabitants are his beloved priests and servants. Although this may be regarded as poeticized fiction nowadays, at that time it was poeticized truth. The naturalists are all marvelously at one on the point that during the Miocene age, Greenland and even Spitsbergen, the remnants of the Hyperborean continent had an almost tropical climate. The pre-Homeric Greeks had preserved a vivid tradition of his land of the internal sun. Whether their Apollos journeyed every year and of which science says that Greenland during the Miocene age developed an abundance of trees such as the yew, the redwood, the sequoia allied to the California species, beaches, plains, willows, oaks, poplars, and walnuts, as well as magnolia and zamia trees. 
In short, Greenland had southern plains unknown to northern regions. It is pointed out that if the Greeks in the days of Homer knew of Hyperborean land beyond the reach of Boreas, God of winter and hurricane, an ideal region where nights were short and days were long, and beyond that, a land where the sun never set and palms grew freely. If they knew all this, although in their day and for ages previously Greenland was clad in perpetual snows, then the tradition must have descended to them from some people more ancient than themselves, who were acquainted with those climatic details of which the Greeks themselves knew nothing. Even in our day, are not wanting scientists who suspect that beyond the polar seas at the circle of the Arctic Pole, there exists a sea which never freezes in a continent which is never green, the true Greenland. The archaic teachings and also the Hindu Puranas or sacred books contain the same statements. Lemuria was the third continent. The third continent was Lemuria. The name was the invention of one P.L. Sclatter who, between 1850 and 1860, asserted on zoological grounds the actual existence in prehistoric times of a continent which he showed to have extended from Madagascar to Ceylon and Sumatra. <sighs> it included some portions of what is now Africa, but otherwise the gigantic continent, which stretched from the Indian Ocean to Australia has now wholly disappeared beneath the waters of the Pacific, leaving only here and there some of its highland tops, which are now islands. Uh. The celebrated Sir Alfred Russell Wallace also agreed that India and Australia certainly were once closely connected. After his prolonged investigation on the Malin Archipelago, Sir Alfred concluded that the only interference we must draw from these facts is undoubtedly that the whole of the island eastward beyond Java and Borneo do essentially form a part of a former Australian or Pacific continent, although some of them may never have joined it. According to Hackle, probably southern Asia itself was not the earliest cradle of the human race, but Lemuria, a continent that lay to the south of Asia and sank later on beneath the surface of the Indian Ocean. Finds proof of theory. Professor Schmidt, writing in defense of Lemuria, declares a great series of animal geographical facts is explicable only on the hypothesis of the former existence of a southern continent of which the Australian mainland is a remnant. In addition to the scientists, he says, there is as evidence the most ancient traditions of various and widespread peoples, legends in India, in ancient Greece, Madagascar, Sumatra, Java, and all the principal islands of Polynesia, as well as the legends of both Americas. Among savages and in the traditions of the Sanskrit literature of India, there is an agreement in saying that ages ago there extended in the Pacific Ocean a large continent which by geographical upheaval was engulfed by the sea Lemuria, and it is believed that all the islands from the Malayan archipelago to Polynesia are fragments of that once immense submerged continent. Both Malacca and Polynesia, which lie at the two extremities of the ocean, and which since the memory of man never had nor never could have had intercourses with each other or even knowledge of each other, have yet a common tradition, common to all the islands and islets, that their respective countries extended far into the sea, that there were in the world but two immense continents, one inhabited by yellow and the other by dark men and that the ocean, by command of the gods, and to punish them for their incessant quarrel, quarreling, swallowed them up. Believe countries extended far west, notwithstanding the geographical fact that New Zealand and the Sandwich Islands and Easter Island are 800 to 1,000 leagues distance from each other, and that according to every testimony, neither these nor any other intermediate islands could communicate with each other before the arrival of Europeans, yet they one and all maintain that their respective countries at one time extended far west on the Asian side. Moreover, with small differences, they all speak dialects evidently of the same language and understand each other with little difficulty, have the same religious beliefs and superstitions, and pretty much the same customs. 
Lemuria is said to have extended southward from the foot of the Himalayan range to Ceylon, Sumatra, to far off Australia and Tasmania, and Easter Island, westward to Madagascar and part of Africa, Norway, Sweden, east and west Siberia, and Kamchatka. <laughs> Shamal is called in ancient history. Shamal, it is called in ancient history. Kamchatka. It was in the Lemurian period that the separation of the sexes took place. Listen to this. The race, until then, having been hermaphrodites, as in the ancient Greek story. This was 18 million years ago. The race, then, having existed for at least 18 million years and perhaps for much longer. We were hermaphrodites. Can you imagine having both? I mean, I'll, I'll take the penis. Ah, you know. Days of enormous animals. Man at the time was gigantic in bulk. Compared with the present size, those were the days of enormous animals of the pterodactyl, the megalosaurus, and other tremendous beasts. And the men were correspondingly large. In the Old Norse and Greek mythology, these giant races are remembered. In Cornwall and in ancient Britain, the traditions of these giants are excessively common. They are said to have lived down even to the time of King Arthur. In the New World are legends of giants living on the eastern slopes of the Andes in, in Ecuador. If the fossil footprints at Carson, Nevada are human, they indicate gigantic men and of their genuineness, there can be no doubt. Over and over again, the skeletons of hypothetical giants have been identified with those of elephants and mastodons. In the journal of the Anthropological Institute of a few years ago, a giant race was shown to have existed at Palmyra. The colossal remains of colossal structures at Stonehenge, Easter Island, and elsewhere also point unmistakably to the existence there at some period of great human beings. Organs of vision were evolved in the third race. At first, the single eye in the middle of the forehead, later called the third eye, and then the two eyes. So this whole, and like this was the last article, the timelines are, you know, the millions and billions and stuff. Um, and if you watch Archaics, uh, Jason Bershear, which I do, he's a fellow Texan, uh, going to support him through everything he does. Um, and really enjoys, con I mean, it's amazing. It's, it's amazing stuff. Um, the best chronologist uh, that's ever lived. Screw it, I'll say it. But, um, you know, this, this is a lot earlier. Um, you know, the, there were giants in those days was a lot earlier than, you know, modern science gives, right? And you look at some of these old world buildings. I mean, the, the entrance to get in is 12 feet high, 15 feet high, 20 feet high. Why do they need so big of freaking doors? You know, uh, and they're massive buildings. I mean, it's like Stonehenge. It's like a guy like me, just like, <laughs> I'm strong. I can get that. Um, didn't do it. You know, who did it? Some big motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Um, so the third race was large and red. Um, I just did a short that I'm going to put out hopefully before this article um about you know the lovelock cave news article um if you've been in this world uh you definitely know about lovelock cave it is such a cool story um very well known in this community but if you don't uh it's gonna blow your mind uh, this will blow your mind right here so the third color of the third race was red varying much in shade Gigantic in height, these men are pictured by Miss Besant and correspondingly broad. They give the impression of tremendous power as far beyond the men of our own generation as are the ancient gigantic animals beyond the oxen, deer, and pigs of today which have descended from them. The head with retreating forehead, the dully lurid eye growing readily over the flattened nose, 
the projection of heavy jaws, all are characteristics of the third race giant. The memory of the third eye persisted in Grecian legend of the one-eyed Cyclops. And actually, the Ascension Islands, okay, there, if you can see this, this is Africa right here. Um, right over here, St. Helena, it might be these right here. There's a, you know, and if you... <laughs> If you believe in, in uh, these giants and that, you know, there was a, uh, some sort of cataclysm that, you know, petrified them, which I've, I've talked about some um, articles of, of petrification. I've got a ton more. Um, they find all sorts of stuff. I've got a short that they found a guy's peg leg that was petrified. I guess a pirate. And, uh, yeah, peg leg was uh, <laughs> petrified. But, um... I'll, I'll I'll try to pull up the photo, but um, they they call it gorilla, gorilla, you know, the gorilla or something. Um, and it's basically a rock, a part of a you know volcanic mountain that looks like a gorilla face. But then I was I read this and I was looking at it, and the head. Let's see where was it? The head with retreating forehead, the dully lurid eyes growing readily over the flattened nose. It looks like that. I'll show it. These giants built the first rock in lava cities in the region of Madagascar. I just said lava city. Oh my god, what if it is? These giants built the first rock in lava cities in the region of Madagascar, followed by many other such cities, whereof here and there vast fragments remain, rocks and no modern engineer could handle, ruins of huge temples, Cyclo um, Cyclopean ruins, they are called, in the temples of Egypt, such as that at Karnak, are seen traces of Lemurian building as practiced by their later descendants of the fourth race, also in massive south of Indian temples. In the temples of Egypt, such as that of Karnak, are seen traces of Lemurian buildings as practiced by their later descendants of the fourth race also in the massive south of India temples. In the course of ages, however, this vast continent underwent many volcanic outbreaks. A slow sinking began at Norway until at last some 700,000 years before the beginning of the tertiary age. Lemuria as such disappeared, leaving only such fragments as Madagascar, Australia, Easter Island, and other insignificant traces. Wow, that was mean. <laughs>